the way he did me is the same way he tried to do 50 Cent. Now, let me tell you what that is. Mm. He was signed to, to Dr. Dre, I think, in the 2003. I had a game 2000, February 2002. But 2002, 2003, I'm promoting game through the mixtapes and through the independent circuit. I'm paying for the Double XL uh, magazine ads and all these different things. Mm -hmm. So I'm just continuing to invest into a product that I have on my label. But those songs are the songs that Aftermath eventually signed him to. But then once they signed him, he didn't produce, I guess, enough songs for Dr. Dre to activate his own thing with Game. But 50 Cent gave him a chance and put the extra stamp and allowed him to come into the G-Unit family. And that right there is what boosted it and activated his own album to actually be coming out. Right. So I seen the way he did 50, the way he did 50 Cent is that the people told him, you better than 50. Mm. You more gangster than 50. Because there was a moment in time there around the time the documentary came out where it very much was like it just seemed like the game was like surging past fifty, and and it was because he had hot ass songs like "Hate It or Love It," and you know fifty was like maybe not going crazy with new music at that time, and that yeah, that definitely did feel like it was a big part of that. He, I think he caved into the pressure of man, you don't need him, man. It's the West Coast, man. You you like fifty, but what fifty had that game didn't have was the business knowledge. Mm. See, Game had the opportunity, but while he had the power, I mean, imagine this. Imagine falling out with the guy that wrote half your songs on your project. <laughs> like a couple months after they, they come out. Like literally, <laughs> his album, I think, came out January 2000, two, 2000, what, five maybe? And within 30 days, they having a dispute in New York where somebody got shot or something at yeah. the radio station. And I'm like, what the hell? And then next thing you know, they had some type of meeting with Russell Simmons and they act like they hugging <laughs> or something. Remember that? And then next thing, then right after that, G U not fuck 50, bop, 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 bop. But history that repeats itself crazy. because then remember like Jay Prince making Drake and Kanye do a fake ass patch it up? Yeah. That's like the same exact thing. <laughs> like the old head that you can't say no to comes to you and like makes you squash your beef, but it's bullshit. But you know what though? <laughs> Universal Records is powerful. Universal Records is powerful. Right. Right? So 50 Cent and Game having a dispute is like a Tupac Biggie, re like something similar right. could probably happen from that. And the, the people about the money like, hold on, no, no, no. Mm. So when Dre was trying to give Game the game about, bro, squash that, fall back, you know, let's get the money, this teamwork. Game, uh, once he bucked Dr. Dre, he bucked Jimmy Iovine, he bucked 50, and he like, nigga, I'm the voice, I'm the face. That right there, I think, was something that um, the fans liked it because it was like the rebellious, the bad boy, the tough guy, you know, on Black Wall Street. But ultimately, when you're signed to the person that you're, you're rebelling against. The yes. Because remember, it took forever yes. for his second album to come yes. out. Yes, because they had to figure out. And uh, Interscope ended up <clears throat> putting it out up under, what's the other company that's over there? Oh, fuck. I can't remember. The other, but... the other label that put that out. Right. It, it wasn't yeah, I Interscope, I and it wasn't that. Aftermath. It was the other arm. Right. Okay. I mean, he still ended up having a pretty good career, but for sure, it, it sucks when you think about it. It's like the egos involved stop something that could have been so crazy because if you had Game, Young Buck, 50, Lloyd Banks, and all Yeo together. all together really actually putting all differences to the side, if we had even got masters. like a five-year run of that, it would have resulted in some of the craziest music that we'll never get to hear, you know? Man. When I seen that, I said, oh, he did the same thing that he did to me, except I just didn't say nothing. I'm like, shit, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just put the music out. <laughs> mm. You know? Because you dropped an album like the same day that the documentary came out, right? Come on now. I'm, Someone I'm, was I'm, telling me the story. Yes. I put out the album, Untold Story, without a documentary. When I found out he named his album the documentary, I put out the Untold Story documentary <laughs> with a DVD with it, man. And I cashed out. Listen, man, listen. 
I, I play chess, man. Like I seen the play. I'm like, well, shit. I ain't never finna be part of that. I might as well cook up my pack because that's legal. That's my genius. Document. That's kind of like evil. That's like villain shit. I did it. And he was <laughs> mad as hell too, boy. Shout out to Game Man. And shout out to Jimmy Henchman. See, Jimmy, <clears throat> let me tell you about Jimmy yeah, Henchman. What's your history with him? Before I released this, I was in pursuit. I came to Aftermath to sell the album, my masters, my video footage, my Pro Tool sessions with Game. All I wanted was 250000 as a flat rate, and I'm going to go on about my business mm -hmm. because I know this y'all new star. I'm not trying to rock the boat. When I went in Dr. Dre's office on his 40 some birthday, I'll never forget because he, he had left and left his assistant. She wanted to see the copies of my, my uh, legal paperwork, and she was trying to get a copy to take it in the office so they can make a copy of my contract and all my stuff. My lawyer said, let them see it, but don't give it to them. Let them look at it, don't give it to them. When she read that paperwork, she said, baby, you got them, but we're going to pass on the 250, but we're going to contact the management and see, you know, if they want to do it. And Game text me. Man, you at the office, man, trying to mess up my deal, man. Man, I got 75000 for you, man. And give me all that stuff, and then you just go away. I say, brother, I'm not selling this for 75000 I want 250000 I'm going to get that, too. I'm going to make it either way, bro. Mm. So you might as well go on and authorize it. He like, man, man, I ain't taking that out of my budget to give to you. I'm like, man, you over here because of me. But that's all right. I told him, all right, thank you. I called Young Buck. He put me on the phone with 50 Cent. Bro. I want to sell this, you know, these masters, because I know y'all about to do it. He said, bro, man, do your thing, bro. We're going to do what we're going to do anyway, but that's your shit, man. Go get your money. Boom. So game turned me down. 50 Cent turned me down. Dr. Drainham turned me down. I said, well, shit, I'm going. I start shopping around. I end up at Koch. Hmm. At Koch, I, they gave me 100000 Then I said, I just want to sell it for 250 more thousand. I'm going to go. The album was, was doing numbers, but I knew they're going to come with a lawsuit and freeze the money. Let me get what I can get now because a lawsuit finna come to try to stop me. And once a lawsuit comes, it freezes all income that come to. Right. The, so I'm like, uh-uh. So they like, oh, oh, that's all you want? That's all you want? I said, that's all I want. Man, Harry up and cut his check. Cause I still had one more album. I went and sold to Navarre <laughs> and did another deal for another album called West Coast Resurrection. <laughs> I listened off my masters. I'm like, I'm finna run me up a meal ticket. And was this basically just like whatever ass songs that he happened to record while you were there? It was everything he recorded. It was just so anything and, and he nothing gave, yeah. is whatever. It's, <laughs> this is all deliberate. Right. <laughs> this is a deliberate project. But probably not stuff that he would have chose to ever release. He probably, nah, hell yeah. no, nah, not at that time. Right. He was Kanye West, oh, yeah, yeah. Dr. Dre, Eminem, no way possible. But for me as an investor, yeah. no, this is this is a gold mine for me right now. Yeah. So, um, Jimmy Henchman somehow. Jimmy but. Henchman. Okay. When I left, when I left Aftermath and talked to 50, then I got the call from Jimmy Henchman. Mm -hmm. But Jimmy Henchman didn't call and say, hey, my brother, you know, uh, let's negotiate. Let's he say, hey, homie, this Jimmy Henchman, man, this game manager. I'm like, oh, okay, what's up? Yeah, man, um, <clears throat> I've been told, <laughs> listen, listen to the gangs and talk. I've been told you got some uh, unreleased materials, man, that you shopping around, man. I don't think that'll be good for you, man, to do that, man. You know, we we got motion right now. and Well, he didn't say motion. But <laughs> that's said, new slang, yeah. yeah but. <laughs> he, 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 he said something else. We, we got some big things that's bigger than you, bro, and, like, you need to really stand down, bro. And I say, look here, bro. I respect you as who you are and you as manager, but this my shit, homie. You can't even call me and press me about mine. He like, man, if you try to put that stuff out, man, you're going to have a whole other set of problems. I just want to tell you that. I say, bro, I don't care nothing about no problems, man. I'm starving right now, nigga, and I'm from the Bay, and I'm from Fillmore. Boy, I'm putting this shit out. <laughs> so whatever y'all going to do, then somebody else hit me like, this such and such, the big blood. Woo -woo. I say, man, <laughs> salute to you too, brother. You know, uh, but my family's hungry up here, and right now y'all done got the millions and all that. You know, you on MTV and all 
I'm putting this out my will without your permission. You were saying that, but were you deep down inside? Were you that, a little scared? Nope, because I'm like, man, I'm starving for real. Boy, they're going to mm. have to shoot me, kill me about these albums because, boy, I'm from Fillmore. And then some of my <laughs> partners gave me 10 bands and 20 bands to promote it. They're like, Fee, you can't go out. Mm. You can't go out. So Jimmy Henchman called back uh, a few days before. He said, I heard you got the deal. Such as I hung the phone up because I'm like, shit, if I talk to him, that's going to make this probably worse. So let me just hang up in his face. Like, I ain't listening. <laughs> I didn't get your message, homie. And I put that shit out. So, yeah, man, Jimmy Henchman, man. Uh, you know, that, that gangster shit works sometimes. But when you got a black man hungry and he got a few dollars he owed to his hood, mm. my hood gave me a few extra racks because I don't sell dope. When I needed to pay for them ads and promo, that was some of the people in my hood. So when I came home with that half a ticket, uh, uh, doing the deal here and doing the deal there, and then next thing you know, I got another two, three hundred. I was able to feed my hood, look out for my people, and whether game ever came to see me or salute me ever again, I'm part of your history regardless. Not that I was trying to be, but I paid the money, so I'm part of it mm. because I did it deliberately. You, so why do you think, like, on his Drink Champs interview that he downplays your role? Just because he doesn't like you? Because he don't want me to get no credit. But mm -hmm. I'm like, that's what make me infamous because I won't come on here and bash him. Right. Hey, brother, you you did your thing. But look at your position now. Imagine that you come from JT, one of the coldest independent CEOs. You get the biggest deal and, and use the name that I started. I'm thinking we're going to interact. You register the name and go on like it was your thing. Mm. Okay. You didn't put out not one artist from the West Coast that got a chance to, to grow off your tree. You kept the tree to yourself. You the only branch on your tree. R.I.P. the Billboard, the rapper that I guess he was going to do something with right. that got killed. But you can't find one rapper that you helped take flight. That is not my legacy. That's your legacy. You had the biggest... You had the whole West Coast behind you. You had the South and the East Coast. And the attitude that he brought to the table, he carved out his own bid that I'm learning from to this day. Man, when God bless you to get on top, man, don't shit on the people that helped you get there because you don't know. You might be cutting your feet off. That is like, that is kind of surprising because it's like every rapper always has at least like one or two guys that they try to push alongside them along the way. And, yeah, I guess he, he didn't really do too much of that, huh? Because it was like, it's me. I get the I'm feeling, the best. yeah. My, from my time even talking to him, you get the feeling that he is someone who seems like he's kind of okay being alone. That he's very much his own person and he's focused on his own mission. This is a lot of stuff people say about me too. That like he's not, you know, necessarily like a people person. He's kind of just in his own world, whatever his mood is. You know what? When you selfish, and I can't say that's what it is, but that's just what it looks like. Mm. You can't. You didn't help not one guy. I mean, come on, it ain't that hard to add some guys to your to your album and help promote them. Mm. If, especially you a label, you Black Wall Street, right? Where's a rapper at? Mm. Where's somebody at? You could have signed any other dope rapper in America with a signed with game. Somebody who not on yet would have had no problem. Mm. But he never, I don't think, offered it. But that's his own mission, though. Like you say, you know, that's every man got their own way they want to do it. Mm -hmm. But imagine being a tree. And you the only branch. That's that's how you got to look at it. See, you got Snoop. You got the dog pound, though. You, you love the dog pound. You know corrupt. You know you know mm -hmm. you know dads. You know uh, other artists that he helped the the uh, the East Siders. We would have probably never knew them, but he helped kick that off. Mm -hmm. That don't mean he got to Snoop. Don't got to keep on babysitting an artist that he helped. Even me, he helped me do shit. But he don't got to keep on helping. Like, if I give you a boost, boy, you better get up, mm. make some shake. You think you'll ever uh, reconcile with the game? You think you'll ever have a conversation with him again? I don't think that we enemies. I actually hit him a couple times, and he didn't hit me back. On but Instagram when, or where? On Instagram. But look, I seen him at the hip hop, uh, at the hip hop or the gang truce or something with him and Snoop had going on. Mm. Um, and when I came, he seen me, him and Wack was walking behind me. He tapped me like, what's up, man? Come on, bro, come over here, holler at me. We went and talked for a minute. <clears throat> we took a picture. And what year is this? This is 2016. Okay. And we took a picture, and I ended up on the front of a magazine with the gang. And they thought I was a crip, and he was a blood, 
and we was joining forces. So whoever wrote the article for some reason, because I was there with the Crips and Bloods. Were you wearing they, blue? I don't know. Nope, I was nope. I had on a white T-shirt. But like the caption with like you and him it was like Crips, Crips and, and Bloods come, joined together, and it's me and him on the front cover. <laughs> Bro, listen, wow. you could Google that picture right now. I can't think of the that name of the amazing. magazine. What is it? Uh, fucking. Uh, and it Don, came out, Don Diva or some shit. Nope. Um, it was <laughs> Murder a, Dog. It was something that came up out of Atlanta. Whoever mm. the magazine was, they was there. So they just like. Crips and Bloods come together. <laughs> That's hilarious. But what was that conversation like? Was That was the last time you talked to him? That's the last time we was in, in each other present. And it was peaceful and it was like love. Like, you know, shit, let's link. I ain't tripping. Mm. Like, you know, it wasn't like, see, I think he still look at me like I'm just a, a little dude up under him, but I always know, nah, I, I help give birth to you, boy. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, that was JT marketing plan to put you with Nas. Right. You didn't know Nas, that was my genius. But I don't get the credit, but I don't have to because it's written in stone. Right. Well, you can't fake it. Part of the record now. Yeah, it's part of the record. It's part like of the resume. A lot of people are going to be talking about it from this. Come on, um, straight up. 